When it comes to promoting a film, there is actually such a thing as bad publicity. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we'll be counting down the top 10 movies plagued by real scandals. The Miley Cyrus Camel Toe episode. Oh, the Camel Toe episode. That was good. I've never heard this expression before. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're looking at films that made headlines as a result of a scandal or controversy surrounding the production, cast, or crew, both in the lead up to the film's release and afterwards. I can tear out my spleen. It's none other than the one and only Joaquin, bitch, DC. Number 10, Twilight Zone, the movie. Can't believe it, you know? I can't. Yeah. Drink your beer, relax. Odd and sometimes sinister occurrences are par for the course when it comes to the Twilight Zone franchise. The thing is, such unnerving events are supposed to transpire within the story, not behind the scenes. During filming, the big screen adaptation of the classic anthology series played host to one of the most tragic accidents in Hollywood history, when a combination of pyrotechnics and a helicopter stunt went awry, star Vic Morrow and two young child actors were killed. The tragedy alone would have damaged the film, but it was further discovered that these children, aged 7 and 6, had been hired illegally and were not allowed to be on set at that hour or under those conditions. Uh, did, did any of you wipe your brow like this when this happened and think this could have happened to anyone? Well, you know, films are really complicated, so it's certainly possible. Number 9. The Passion of the Christ Honestly, this Mel Gibson-directed biblical drama was marred with controversy from start to finish. For starters, the violence and graphic imagery of suffering and torture was seen by some as verging on religious horror porn. Then, there were issues of historical inaccuracies. Undeniably, the biggest problems, however, were accusations of anti-Semitism in the way in which Jews were depicted in both the script before production and, to perhaps a lesser extent, in the film itself. Had Gibson's anti-Semitic rant taken place a few years earlier, it's doubtful this movie would have ever gotten made. I'm ashamed of that. That came out of my mouth. And I'm not that. That's not who I am, you know. Number eight, Ghost in the Shell. Why can't I feel my body? Sure, dressing in blackface isn't remotely acceptable anymore, but on-screen diversity still has a long way to go. As seen with films like Aloha and Exodus Gods and Kings, in this modern age, a large portion of the population does not want to see Caucasians playing non-white roles. So when Scarlett Johansson was cast to play the lead in the 2017 big screen adaptation of the hit manga Ghost in the Shell, the news wasn't exactly well received. Say something nice. Considering the character is named Major Matoko Kusanagi in the source material, many felt that casting a white actress over a Japanese one was clearly inappropriate. Ultimately, Ghost in the Shell was deemed to be a box office flop. Please, don't let me die. Who sent you? Oh, oh. Please. Number seven, A Dog's Purpose. Okay. Go, <laughs> Cinema goers seem particularly susceptible to the appeal of sentimental films about the relationship between man and man's best friend. You know what dog lovers really don't like though? Seeing animals get mistreated. And this film production saw itself embroiled in a rather serious scandal when a particularly damning on-set video surfaced. In it, a canine performer is seen being forced into extremely rough water against its will, eventually going under before someone yells cut. Seemingly overnight, a dog's purpose went from being an appealing tearjerker to a widely boycotted film. It still did well at the box office, but the footage, edited for maximum effect or not, nonetheless hurt its reputation. They say no dogs were harmed. Give me your take on this. Absolutely no dogs were harmed in this. Number six, Last Tango in Paris. What did you answer? Who left the butter? A controversial film when it was first released, this Bernardo Bertolucci-directed picture starring Marlon Brando and Maria Schneider is still the subject of scandal, even decades later. At the time of its release, the NC-17 film was banned in various countries and only released in others after certain edits were made. Decades later, however, the film has been the subject of another scandal. The infamous sex scene, which saw butter used as a lubricant, was apparently filmed with minimum notice given to Maria Schneider and without her consent. It did not even appear in the script. Understandably, this reveal prompted outrage. It's over. It's That's over. Right. It's over and then it begins again. What begins again? Number five, I'm still here. I'm still here. I don't scare. I don't fear. 
From the very beginning, this film attracted a lot of attention because of its confusing premise and Joaquin Phoenix's commitment to this long-running piece of performance art and meta-acting. In the same year as the film's release, however, director Casey Affleck was sued by two female employees who worked on the movie during its tumultuous and unconventional production. Producer Amanda White and cinematographer Magdalena Gorka alleged that they had suffered sexual harassment at the hands of Affleck throughout the filming process. The lawsuits were settled out of court, but the scandal continues to follow Affleck years later. Number 4. Amityville The Awakening God gave up on us, sweetheart. So I gave up on God. Here's an example of just how far-reaching the effects of a scandal can be. Though Harvey Weinstein didn't even serve as producer on this particular film, the fact that it was distributed by Dimension Films, which is owned by the Weinstein Company, was enough to land Amityville The Awakening within the blast radius of Weinstein's scandal to end all scandals. Harvey Weinstein, as everyone now knows, has been accused of various sexual abuses by over 80 women. Weinstein has left the company that bears his name, but the shockwave of his actions will surely continue to be felt by many associated films. It's a house. Now you have to what house? Number three. The interview. You know what's more destructive than a nuclear bomb? Words. Scandal feels like a bit of an understatement when talking about a film which prompted a dictator to threaten the United States with war should the film be released. The interview sees James Franco and Seth Rogen playing journalists charged with assassinating North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un. Given this leader's reputation, it was admittedly a pretty dicey or brave concept for a film. Same, same, but different. But still same! <laughs> when North Korea threatened military action and other parties cautioned of terrorist attacks, Columbia Pictures ultimately opted to go the digital rental and limited release route. North Korea was later blamed for a massive revenge hack of Columbia's parent company, Sony. They hate us because they ain't Stop us. saying that. Hate us because they ain't us. Number two, the birth of a nation. I pray you sing to the Lord a new song. American actor and filmmaker Nate Parker was accused of rape back in 1999 when he was in college, but was ultimately acquitted of all charges. Given this history, when Parker presented the world with The Birth of a Nation in 2016, about the famed slave preacher turned rebellion leader Nat Turner, that chapter of his life quickly took center stage with a torrent of bad publicity. Why? Perhaps because the film not only involves a rape, which Parker's character sets out to avenge, but the story was also co-written by Jean Macchiani Celestin, the co-defendant with whom Parker was originally accused. You need to tell me what done this to you. Because I'm going to take care of it, yeah. Number one, all the money in the world. How much would you pay to release your grandson if not $17 million? Nothing. This scandal proved so damaging that the filmmaker actually recast a central role after filming had completed. In 2017, star Kevin Spacey, like Harvey Weinstein, was accused of numerous counts of serious sexual misconduct. But when you're a famous director like Ridley Scott, you've got the clout to make such big changes at the last minute to save a film from being swamped by disgust and disapproval. Spacey's role was recast and went to Christopher Plummer, who then received both a Golden Globe nomination and Academy Award nomination for his work in this story about the famous kidnapping of industrialist J.P. Getty's grandson. However, sadly, the film attracted even more controversy when it was revealed that Mark Wahlberg had reportedly received $1.5 million for taking part in the reshoots, while co-star Michelle Williams received less than $1,000. How much would you pay to release your grandson if not $17 million? Nothing. Tell him I'm coming. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.